S&P 500 companies saw the largest corporations traded on U.S. stock markets bought back $806 billion worth of their own shares in 2018. This was up 55% from 2017, according to data from S&P Dow Jones indices. It was an all-time record that beat the prior record set in 2007 by a blistering 37%. And we all know what happened after 2007. Cash-rich companies can use the cash they're sitting on to buy back their shares, but most S&P 500 companies are so indebted that even the Fed has raised concerns about financial stability, meaning that the Fed is starting to worry about corporate debt as being the top contributor to the risk of a financial crisis. In other words, most S&P 500 companies are burdened by debt and they're borrowing still more to buy back their own shares. These companies are in the market and are buying their own shares in the market. They're buying no matter what. They're not buying to acquire an asset at a fair price. They're buying to drive up the price. They're bidding high and they're bidding often and they're bidding to stop every dip. They're bidding to push every rally higher. The higher the price they pay, the better. They're the relentless bid. This was illegal until 1982. It was considered securities fraud. It was considered a form of market manipulation. But the rules were changed in 1982, and now it's considered a virtue. This money that companies use to buy back their own shares is essentially wasted. Companies get nothing in return. The shares they buy back get canceled and disappear. What companies are left with is less cash and higher debt burdens. Over the past five years, S&P 500 companies bought back $3 trillion worth of their own shares. $3 trillion with a T. That's about the GDP of France. This has made corporate America by far the largest buyer of U.S. stocks, even as other large investor categories have become net sellers. What has this done to stocks? And what would happen if this slows down or ends? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wolf Richter of WolfStreet.com, and you're listening to the Wolf Street Report. It's Sunday, April 14th, 2019. Apple bought back $74 billion worth of its own shares in, in 2018. Oracle, $30 billion. Wells Fargo, $21 billion. Microsoft, $16 billion. But who else is buying these stocks? Among the major investor groups... They're foreign investors. And these foreign investors, over the past five years, shed $234 billion in shares. Pension funds shed $900 billion in shares over the past five years. Now, pension funds have to keep asset class allocations on target. So when one asset class surges in price, they may have to sell some of it and buy another asset class to keep their allocations on target. Mutual funds shed $217 billion in shares over the past five years. And that's been a process that's been going on for years as investors have, sh have shifted from mutual funds to exchange-traded funds. Life insurers, they added $61 billion in stocks over the past five years. And households added $223 billion in stocks. Now, this data comes from the Federal Reserve and from Goldman Sachs. These investor groups all combined over the past five years shed $1.1 trillion of stocks. At the same time, corporate America, buying back its own shares, acquired $3 trillion worth of stocks. And this is what's been happening in the market over those years. As other investor groups were shedding shares, corporate America bought shares at about three times the pace that other investor groups were shedding them. So it all worked out. In terms of debt-funded uh, share buybacks, the Fed was the big enabler in repressing interest rates, uh, so making very cheap debt available to these companies, even if they had uh, tarnished credit ratings, and they were able to easily borrow this money and buy back their own shares. In uh, terms of companies that have a lot of cash, the big enabler was the tax law changes governing the repatriation of overseas cash. 
the preferential tax treatment of that uh, repatriation of overseas cash cost, as was widely predicted, these companies to buy back their own shares with this money instead of investing it in facilities and expansion projects and jobs in the United States. So what could ever slow down these share buybacks or stop them entirely? One, the share buybacks funded by bringing back this overseas cash were sort of a one-time thing, a one-time event. Overseas cash will eventually be depleted and it can no longer be used for share buybacks. Also, if uh, debt gets more expensive and a little bit harder to get, companies have uh, more problems funding their share buybacks with debt and that will put downward pressure on share buybacks. Another factor that could slow down share buybacks is when companies with an investment grade credit rating fear a downgrade to chunk. And there is a large body of S&P 500 companies out there with a triple B credit rating that is just one or two notches away from a chunk credit rating. And so these companies fear a downgrade. And in order to avoid a downgrade, when it gets closer, they will try to get the balance sheet in order. They will try to lessen the amount of debt they have and uh, one of the first things they will do is cut the share buybacks. GE was one of the prime examples of that. When it got into trouble, it ended its share buyback program on a dime. It then cut its dividend. It then started dismembering itself and is now trying to stay relevant. GE still has not been downgraded to junk. It has so far been able to avoid that fate, but it is very close to a junk credit rating and it will not buy back any more shares until it gets its credit rating back up. Another scenario that could end the practice of share buybacks would be if Congress makes them illegal again as they were before 1982. And this is precisely what is now uh, being discussed in Congress. There are some folks that are putting this on the agenda. They have talked about it in some of their speeches. So this is a possibility. Now, I doubt this will happen under this administration. This is the most pro-corporate America administration in my lifetime. But it is now out there, and it has been brought up. And so Goldman Sachs has decided to react to it. Goldman Sachs makes a huge amount of money off of share buybacks uh, in numerous ways. It benefits from them tremendously. So it came out with a research note to describe what would happen if these share buybacks ended entirely. Goldman Sachs calls this scenario a world without share buybacks. And it writes, repurchases have consistently been the largest source of U.S. equity demand. And it adds, without company buybacks, demand for shares would fall dramatically. Then it goes through a range of uh, consequences if these share buybacks uh, stopped. One, volatility would surge, meaning that uh, downward volatility would surge. This volatility would surge because the relentless bit that these corporate buyers are would, would disappear. So there would be no dip buyers of any consequence. If there's no demand for those shares, these corporations wouldn't jump in. The sellers would find themselves in a vacuum without the corporate buyers. Without share buybacks, a, a lot of the metrics that we use to evaluate stocks would dwindle. So earnings per share would dwindle. Price earnings ratios would go down. Uh, prices would go down. Forward-looking earnings per share would go down. So this world without buybacks would turn into a messy affair. I think it's unlikely that share buybacks are going to be made illegal again in the near future. Uh, the stars are just not lined up that way. But there are factors in place and there are forces in play that indicate we might see a reduction in share buybacks 
especially from the peak year 2018, but even compared to prior years. So the availability of cheap debt, the disappearance of overseas cash, those kinds of factors are going to make share buybacks more scarce. While they may still occur on a fairly large scale in good times, they will likely not be at the level of 2018 for much longer. When the economy gets into difficulty and corporations are starting to struggle, especially over indebted corporations, share buybacks get slashed. This happens in every major economic period that is difficult. This happened uh, during the financial crisis as well. Uh, this occurs generally simultaneously with a stock market downturn or crash. And in part, the stock market crash occurs because corporations have stopped their share buybacks. They have stopped their share buybacks because they're scared and they're needing to preserve cash. And they're worried about the balance sheet and they're worried about their credit rating. And so they step back and then their shares cannot find the buyers they need at these price levels. Share buybacks work in good times, but in bad times, corporations are too worried to engage in them. But without share buybacks, uh, price discovery in the stock market can cause a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth, as we have seen in prior crashes. When the biggest buyer responsible for $3 trillion in stock purchases over the past five years steps away for whatever reason or cuts its purchases for whatever reason, then the remaining investors will discover entirely new price levels. A market that is so uniquely dependent on corporations buying back their own shares is in a very fragile position. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wolf Richter of WolfStreet.com. Thank you for listening to the Wolf Street Report.